Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video following in theme with the fact that yesterday I talked about Dragoonity Knight Ascalon, today's video is going to be reviewing and talking about Dragoonity Coos in more in-depth detail, and what it specifically does to sort of address the issues Dragoonity has as being an outdated theme and all that sort of stuff. But I'm going to preface this with, yes, I know I talked about Dragoonity Knight Ascalon in yesterday's video, and I know that we are potentially getting more Dragoonity support from Cybernetic Horizon, so so I can't really fairly give a 100% final verdict on all of the cards in this support wave unless they're just amazing, like in the case of Koos. But uh, I can't really give a final verdict unless I see all of the support wave because, like, the last cards like this revealed might just completely change the way Ascalon interacts with uh, with like its floating effect or with how it gets summoned and all that sort of nonsense. So I'll definitely be doing a video like recapping the entirety of the support wave once the entire support wave is confirmed and slated to come out. But until then, I'm going to be going over the individual cards as they are spoiled for release because some cards are better than others. So with that out of the way, Dragoonity Coos is a wonderful addition to the deck. It is fantastic. It is an amazing new tuner for the deck, which I actually was really, really excited upon reading. And it is a level 2 dragon tuner effect monster with a 1,000 attack and 200 defense. Thank God. If it had one more attack point, I would be really upset. But its effect is, cannot be used as a synchro material except for the synchro summon of a Dragoonity monster. And if this card on the field is used as a synchro material, you can treat its level as 4. While this card is equipped to a monster, you can special summon this equipped card. So essentially, this is another copy of Dragoonity Phalanx for the deck, just making it just that much better in terms of a consistency engine overall. Because now we have essentially 6 copies of Dragon Ravine at minimum, and 6 copies of a Phalanx or Phalanx-like card that allows you to access your Vajrayanas, your Gay Dergs, uh, even things like Barka. Like, you have more cards that allow you accessibility into play starting off of your Dragon Ravine, which has been a huge problem ever since Master Rule 4, and actually, really since Master Rule 3, taking the first turn draw away from the deck. Um, in the past, if you opened with Ravine plus Ducks, that was pretty okay because you just discard another random dead card out of your hand to send flanks to grave and summon your ducks, and you were still essentially playing with five cards because you took a raw neg one off the Dragon Ravine. But once Master Rule 3 went into effect back in 2014, and we didn't get to draw our card going first, so we didn't get six cards with our starting hand going first, essentially that really changed the dynamic because it meant that if you were doing that play to send Phalanx to Grave off Dragon Ravine, you were really taking a hard neg a lot harder than you were previously, because a lot of this deck's combo sequences involve three card minimum card investments, and some of the best ones require four card investments, and that's assuming you open with Ravine and a Phalanx to discard. So, if you're just taking the raw neg off Dragon Ravine to send Phalanx to Grave, then usually that means that your starting hand is the entirety of your combo, and there's no like other cards in your hand that could be used as potential back row to set, disruption, or any sort of uh, protection, anything like that. So this card really changes that dynamic in terms of making the deck overall a bit more consistent. And also because it has a thousand attack, that's great for the fact that that means that we have even more targets in the deck now for cards of consonants. More good targets, I should say. We've never been starved for targets for cards of consonants. We have Phalanx, we have Ackley's, we have all the other Dragoonity tuners, but none of those are really amazing. And I find it very interesting that in a synchro-focused archetype like Dragoonity's, even though it was printed in 2010, designed and printed in 2010, I'm surprised that Phalanx is the only tuner that was able to special summon itself Considering it's a very heavily implied synchro heavy strategy, um, it just it always struck me as very strange. I was always wondering why Ackley's couldn't special itself or why Brandy Stock or Corsesca couldn't special summon themselves. Hell, there are other tuners like Pylus that are like terrible, <laughs> um, that like just have no purpose in the deck. Or like, was it Pylus or Pylum? I can't remember. I know there's Primus Pylus, which is the level 5 wing beast. I think I can't remember what the tuner's name is. Um, but regardless, but like they tried to get away with making that the case with like Militum being able to special summon whatever was equipped. I, uh, regardless, it's, it's one of those things that just never quite made sense to me. But now with Coos in the deck, we have another card that is capable of special summoning itself like Phalanx, which is great for consistency, but it's also great for just being another Cards of Consonance target. Cards of Consonance is one of those cards that sort of tries to help address the issues that we have that the deck has sustained post Master Rule 3, which is where we lost the first turn draw card. 
basically because of cards of consonants existing you can put a combo piece into your graveyard and replace it with two new cards making your plays effectively potentially take less cards to perform because if you're opening a hand of ducks phalanx cards of consonants that is inherently better for you resource wise than just straight up opening ravine phalanx because Ravine will go on the field and it'll be a dead card, essentially. It's not a resource for you to utilize. But in the case of opening Ducks plus Cards of Consonants plus Phalanx, you Cards of Consonants the Phalanx away, draw two fresh cards, and then the Ducks itself is a one-card play, and you have no dead weight there being taken up by something like Dragon Ravine requiring being placed on the board. So there's that. So basically, because Koos operates like Phalanx, that's fantastic. That means that with both Phalanx and Koos in the deck, and then the addition of Destrudo as a viable option that is also a Cards of Consonants target, we can possibly get away with maxing out on Cards of Consonants and effectively using that as a way to try and circumvent the problem that the deck has had since Master Rule 3, which is the fact that this deck has always been very combo-heavy with the hands that you, you know, invest into combos, and you just can't really afford to do that anymore because you draw no cards except combo pieces in terms of what your board state is going to be. You can't afford to draw, like, back row or anything like that. Or, like, if you do, your board is going to be worse. Like, this sort of helps address that problem by making the deck overall a bit more consistent as far as its resource allocation and resource uh, accumulation. So that is something that I really like. But what I do also also just think is fantastic about this card that really sort of steps Dragoonity up at least a little bit in terms of its competitive viability, or not really competitive viability, just viability in general under Master Rule 4, is the fact that this card can treat itself as level 4. Now, I know why they did this. They did this just, you know, strictly so that they could say, look, you can summon Dragoonity Knight Ascalon really easily with Vajrayana and Kus. But they unironically made Barka probably the best card in the extra deck now with this card. Arguably better than Vajrayana. I could see possible future Dragoonie lists playing two copies of Barka and two copies of Vajrayana in the extra deck. Uh, like slimming away copies of Vajrayana, four copies of Barka, because Barka, unlike Vajrayana, equips all potential Dragon-type Dragoonie tuners in your graveyard to it, meaning that you could have possibly three, four, or even five cards in your grave to equip in the form of multiple phalanxes and multiple cooses that could all special summon themselves which provide ways to play needle fiber it provides just link spamming in general it's very good and the fact that you aren't restricted to synchroing with dragoonity monsters with coos you're only restricted into synchro summoning into dragoonities with it is a fantastic way to have worded the card because that means that you're able to use Garuda or Mavilus as a possible extender going forward into making your Barka plays and stuff like that. So it gives a lot of value back to the deck that had been being stripped away from it slowly since Master Rule 4. So they just strangely made Barka really good. If you read this card and didn't within 10 seconds think of the ability to summon Barka with this card, then I don't know what kind of Dragoonity strategy you've been playing, honestly, because that was the very first thing I thought of when I looked at this card and saw that it could make itself 4. I was like, oh, you can just go Ducks plus this into Barka now, or anything else as far as a level 4 Winged Beast into Barka, and that's fantastic. That's huge. That's huge for the deck's viability in a Link-centric metagame, because they luckily, for design aspect, said it cannot be used as a Synchro material except for the Synchro Summon of a Dragoonity monster, which means you can use it as a Link material, you could overlay with it into some rank 2 if you want to, it's only restricted into making Dragoonity Synchros if you use it as a Synchro material, but anything else is fair game, so that's actually really good. And it just fits all the stat lines perfectly, it's a thousand attack, so it's Cards of Consonants target. It's a level 2 that can special summon itself like Phalanx, making it additional copies of Phalanx in the deck, which overall ups the consistency of the deck in question. And the fact that it makes itself a level 4 to access Barka, a card that we've never had reliable access into since it was released in 2010, uh, like, it's, that's, just, that's really cool. The fact that this card unironically made a card from 8 years ago probably the best card in the Dragoonity Extra, depending on how far we could take it, is absolutely ridiculous. Um, like, that's just insane. Barka is ridiculous when you start putting multiple tuners onto it to special summon it. It's always been really good, but we've never had a reliable way to summon Barka. The only ways you could summon Barka in the past were with, like, Shieldwing, Shieldwing Debris Dragon, 
Um, Legionnaire, Legionnaire Phalanx. Ducks, Shield Wing Phalanx. It's always like a three card investment. But luckily, Koos just happens to make that a non factor anymore. You're able to just go straight into it uh, very easily. And uh, that's probably the best thing that this card has going for it, is the fact that it is just a card that, because it's a consonance target, it's going to allow the deck to play more cards of consonances, which allows it to draw into more combo pieces more readily, and also allows it to minimize bricking, and also allows it to load up more of these tuners like Coos and Phalanx in multiple numbers into the graveyard to try and facilitate an even bigger Barka play. And Barka's not a hard once per turn at all. You can easily make one Barka and then use that to link spam and then follow up with another Barka off of one of the Kooses that you brought back off the initial Barka. Like, Garuda and Mavelis are still very, very much cards that could be utilized to this extent, and you're just going to be able to do things like make Needle Fiber, make Summon Sorceress, do all sorts of stuff with the Dragoonity theme now that we don't even really need a Dragoonity Link Monster anymore. We just need more cards like this that are better at facilitating good combo, like, backbone and structure to go into the already good and established Link Monsters that we do have access to. We've got access to Hieratic Seal of the Celestial Spheres, Needle Fiber, Summon Sorceress. It's going to take a lot of work for any card that is released that's Dragoonity specific to be on par with those types of cards, but hey, if Konami wants to release something like that, I would be very, very, very much for it. But so that's essentially all I wanted to talk about for this video. Like, this card is 100% amazing because of the fact that it just increases consistency, which helps solve some of the deck's problems. It's another consonants target, which goes in hand in hand with the consistency thing I just talked about, and you know, making your combos require essentially less cards. Um, all that sort of stuff. Like, making the deck reliant less on Dragon Ravine in the long term is actually just fantastic. Uh, the fact that this has no hard restriction on synchros other than making Dragoonity cards, which is what you were going to likely do with it anyway, because you're going to be able to facilitate plays into getting into your other cards anyway. Like, this card was a very, very good card design choice for a retrain of Phalanx, essentially. It's essentially a retrain of Phalanx. Um, in fact, its artwork looks very similar to Phalanx, if you actually like start looking at like the way the head is oriented, the wings are oriented, all that sort of stuff. Like it's very much a card that was inspired by Phalanx, operates like Phalanx, which is something that functionally we are blessed by, and it just makes Barka really good. Like like I said, I could easily see Barka being a two of in the extra deck, and I could easily see myself cutting copies of Vajrayana to make room for more Barkas. Like that's how good this card makes Barka, which is ridiculous. I never thought I would see the day. I never thought I'd see the day that Useless Ass Barka would be... It would go from quite literally the worst Dragoonity Synchro that has seen no play ever to arguably the best Synchro. Like, even Trident saw play for a short period of time in uh, Ultima Azulk and Metal Foes as a way to get cards out of your opponent's extra deck. And all the level 6s obviously saw play in various Dragoonity variants of the regular variety over the course of time. Even Gabolg got a little bit of play in certain formats just because it could be big to get over threats. But, like, still, ridiculous the fact that this card is so good that it makes Barka insane now. Uh, but that's all I wanted to say about this card. I probably rambled a bit in this video. It was very unstructured, but that's just because I felt like I really didn't have a lot of key points to say about this card other than just praise for it, because there's no downsides to this card. There are absolutely zero downsides to this card. There's no synchro I want to make in... There's probably not any synchros that I want to make other than a Dragoonie synchro that's not Cyframe Lord Omega, but if I'm able to make Barka and just Link Spam instead into a better board, I'm 100% down for that. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching, and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As always, drop a like on the video if you enjoyed what you saw, and if you want to see more, subscribe if you already haven't. It would help out the channel a lot as far as growth and all that sort of nonsense. But links in the description to my Facebook fan page as well as my personal Patreon page if you want to support the channel directly and help out as far as making content on a regular basis goes. Patreon is the best way to do so, and you'd have my eternal gratitude. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching, guys. Again, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Thanks for your time as usual, and I'll see you in the next video, guys. Take care.